Good day and welcome to your favorite sport program on TV Plus Sport. As usual, today is going to be an interesting moment on the show mm. as we look at some trending um, topic in the world of sport. Uh, yes, I also have a guest that uh, uh, will be joining me to talk about the challenges of football academies in Nigeria. Like we all know, um, there are some football academies in the country, but there are some that um, have not um, really got into that potential. And that has to do with the rules that guide some of these um, football academies. So, uh, so joining me is um, Coach um, Ojo Oyebode, all the way from um, Ipaja. It's good to have you on the show, Coach. Uh, it's my pleasure. Good evening for having me. Thank you so much. Um, I'm happy to be here to talk about the challenges of football academies in Nigeria, which uh, I'm part of um, uh, the system. Okay. Yes, um, thank you, Sue, that um, you um, gave us your time. You are the proprietor of Youthful Youth Soccer Academy, and um, I'm sure in that axis, Yanopaja, your academy will probably be one of the well-known academy. Looking at your profile, you are a product of the NIS and what you've done, and also an ex-player. So you have all area of ramifications of experiences to actually um, have an academy. But we know that not everything has been smooth sailing when it comes to academy, when it comes to transfer, when it comes to players and resources. What comes to your mind about the reasons why some of the football academies in the country are not living up to the potentials? Uh, thank you once again for having me. Uh, let me go straight to the number one because uh, there are numerous, just like you mentioned earlier. Uh, but one of them, which is the major, is uh, the knowledge of the game. A lot of administrators of football academies in Nigeria does not really have the knowledge of the game. Okay. They don't really see uh, academies as a school as a place where life needs to be developed beyond sport. Because when you are an academy, if from the from the handle of definition, uh, a soccer academy is a learning institution that prepares young athletes for professional athletes. Mm. So if we are not really getting the objective of why we have soccer academies, then we are not going to get the results uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day. That's why I say the knowledge of the game you know, there's a saying that says uh, that uh, 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 people perish lack because there is no knowledge or lack or lack of knowledge. So that means when you really don't have the knowledge of what you're doing, there's tendency that you are going to fail in it. So okay. it's important that everyone that wants to go into the business of football academies in Nigeria have the knowledge of the game. And the coaching education is also another factor that is affecting education. Because you can't give what you don't have you need to have what to give so it's very important to have the knowledge of the game and another thing is the passion so if the passion is absent it is just like the loss of passion is the beginning of you know the love of money if i am actually doing it because of money i would have probably become one of the top academies but the passion first then the money comes later because we have to go into the road to go and bring uh, the diamonds out and this takes a lot of time to 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 you know to refine and there's nothing you can do about it you just have to uh keep doing it because of the passion you have uh for the game and the second point that i would uh, like to mention is the objective objective of an academy is to educate is to develop but we have seen situation where coaches won't win want to win at the academy level they want to win they want to win for instance my academy uh, participated for the first time about three seasons ago in the Ikeja Divisional uh, Football League we won only one match mm -hmm. in the whole of the season the remaining matches there was not even draw, a draw there was not even a draw at all but at the second uh, season with the with the with the knowledge I acquired in NIS and other, you know, football uh, schools I've attended, you know, was able to help these athletes. In the second season, they were able to promote from Ikeja League to Ikeja Super League. Mm. So that is where we are presently, and we are on fourth in table. So which means that objective of a football academy is to develop talent, and not only talent, to develop life. Well, 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 so well, if I well, uh, the, the, the absence of 
knowing the role FIFA plays in the game is another factor. FIFA is the governing body of football in the world. And there are laws that have been laid down in the game, which so many athletes really do not know because most times I, I you know, I teach my players, I ask them what are the laws of the game. They are look at me and say, ah, laws of the game. If I ask them, okay, how many laws do you have? They might say four, they might say one. I say, it is not what we think. So if I'm going to take one to four of the laws of the game out of 17 we have, I will talk about the pitch. Okay. Which is number one. Now, when we talk about pitch, tell me you are a product uh, of, you know, this axis where I belong. And it belongs, you left there. Since you left till now, there is no stadium in the whole of Alimosho as big as it is as a local government in the whole, let me say, Labour State, because I have not been to other, uh, or, you know, every other state. But I can say of the state I belong. There is no single stadium, which is the number one laws of the day. No stadium. Hmm. So if there's no stadium, apparently there's not going to be pitches. Hmm. So I just thank God for the life of the players. Maybe it's what their luck choose. I've been in the barrack for good to nine years now. I started the academy when I stopped playing. I didn't stop playing because I was injured. I don't know. I stopped because there's no time again for me to, to go further because I started actually late. Hmm. Because that's another point I'm going to discuss, you know, ahead of you know ahead as you go in this um, point of discussion so i secure the pitch in the barrack okay. and you know what that means so it has to come with a lot of discipline it has to come with a lot of rules or you know and regulation it has to come with other challenges too whereby you might have prepared for your training or you prepare your training session and when you get to the barrack there might be a time where other activities has to take place in the barrack so you have no choice than to either scrap the training for that day or to improvise as a coach that I am. Yes. So, in that case, football pitch is very important. If we have to develop football in Nigeria, I don't want to know what anybody can tell me about that. In the absence of that, we cannot get results. We can see in the survival level where the pyramid actually pointed to. We mm -hmm. can see the results there. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation of Nigerian football is, is not there. Is destroyed. That, let's just be fact but about it. Because all the players that are playing for Nigerian Super Eagle are never, or let me say 90% of them, are never trained in the grassroots of Nigeria. Because they, they arrive here on the platter of gold, Nigeria also goes there, or let me say NFL goes there to go and, you know, adopt them, take them, say they are the best. Yeah, coach. Um, so, I, 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 now, I yeah. Um, at this point, um, you, you said so many vital information that I'm, I, uh, I think I need to just um, bring those words back to you. But let, let me ask you, what were the objectivity, your own um, objective for starting this um, football academy? What are those things that came to your mind at that point in time? before because we also mm -hmm. know that these football academies don't operate in isolation they're either registered by the youth um, by the um, football division they belong to but what was that thing that was in your mind when you decided to have youthful youth soccer academy uh, thank you very much i played um as far as east africa kenya precisely uganda and some other countries like that east africa uh, so at that time in 2014, I looked at my age, I looked at the level I have played, and I looked at where I have to go to, I discovered that my age cannot carry me. Okay. My resources can't take me there. Even the knowledge alone cannot take me there. Okay. So I decided, for as far as I have experienced as a player, and for what I've seen, structures I've seen in countries I have visited, I came back home and I decided to start the academy in order to transfer my knowledge into the life of the younger ones. Exactly. If you come to my academy, the oldest cannot be more than 23. The oldest cannot be more than 23. And I'm even with, it is even with pity I kept those ones in my academy hmm. because I want to encourage them. What, what role? So that's the one Okay. 
Yeah, what, what role then? You, you said well, you said well, I, I'm, I'm sure. But what, to add to that question, uh, I, I would like to ask, what role do you think the government or, um, of the day needs to play to ensure that um, football academies in Nigeria don't just die along the way after two or three years? What's the role of government in developing football academies in the country? Uh, thank you. Uh, for one of the points I have um, highlighted to discuss. Yes. Another point is that the eradication of physical education in Nigerian economy, in Nigerian education or in Nigerian system, is another problem. Okay. Let them take food, uh, uh, physical and health education back to school. Let all the sporting facilities in the schools start functioning. Exactly. When they are functioning, talent will be naturally discovered from schools mm. and be transferred or transcend or, you know, go into academies for higher sporting education beyond football now. So what government should do in order to develop our academies or to help with academies is to do that. That's number one. We academies, or let me say other academies who really do not have facility to train, can use school facility to train. Okay. Now, the second law of the game is the ball that we are playing. If you go to the market now, the cost of one ball now, minimum, is 10,000 naira. And you call the parent to say, Mommy, please, your son needs a ball for personal drills and this and that. She will first ask you, coach, where do you want you to see 10,000 naira? I have not paid his school fees. I have not done this. I have not done that. So government have a lot of role to play in making available facilities for us to play. For instance, I'm an affiliate of the Kenya Football Divisional Association. Okay. I'm an affiliate of Lagos State Football Association. Good. And I'm also the PRO for Lagos State Football Coaches Association. My um, affiliation annually what am i getting in return hmm. nothing is given to me okay i'm talking for my for myself hmm. and i stand to be corrected others i don't know if they're affiliated or they're not affiliated i don't know what they're giving to them so if an academy is affiliated to the state or to the division to some extent yes. we need an assistant hmm. that is you have identified us as a stakeholder in the business and you have seen our our interest. You have seen everything we put together. I go to courses. I use my money. Okay. You know, I mentioned coach education, and I'm still coming back to that one because there are so many educational system in coaching in Nigeria that is no longer there. Like I've seen, I can be a calf other calf courses like that. Our coaches have to travel out of Nigeria to go and do all those courses, and that's why you can see that you know coaches in Nigeria are not you know suitable. For Nigerian survival, because you really do not give us what we need to mm. coach Nigerian survival. Let me not go into that one as I'm talking about mm. what they can do for the academies, for us to do better, for us to be able to uh, to to strive and to give you what you really want, uh, what, to return the glory of this nation back to the time of JJ Okocha, uh, Olise, and the likes of them like that have uh, made this country, you know, proud. Economic uh, situation of the country is also a setback. Okay. For academies, players cannot afford to buy boots. They cannot afford to buy a ball for themselves. Even the cost of just in the market is so high that so the the, the interest in participating in, in in football or in sport generally in Nigeria is going down because people cannot access the facility. They cannot afford the facility, so it's really affecting the academic system in Nigeria. So, yeah, well said. And I'm sure a lot of people agree to you, those watching us from across um, um, the globe, because we are being watched right now in over 40 countries. And I'm sure there are a lot of football clubs and players open. But uh, I'll go to my next question, and I think you've answered all that questions appropriately. Is the issue is, what's the climax? What's the highest objectivity, objectivity of um, the club? that you can say, I've achieved this? What is your best um, achievement so far to a, a, a football academy? Some said, when you transfer a player from here to the next country, Europe or the case may be, that means you show that that is a very top football academy. Some said, when you are able to win 
games within your vicinity or ju jurisdiction or district as the case may be what do you think is the highest achievement of a f that um, a football academy should be uh for me so far i've not sold any player and the academy is going to be about nine this year okay my objective i said it i want to transfer knowledge into players so many factors cannot make things work the way you expect i can't go beyond my 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 status quo mm. what i have in mind is what i'm doing and our achievement okay as i speak the training or as a session i know the number of players they are not less than 40. Mm. it has to be above 40 that comes to my training per session mm. these guys are happy coming around they are willing to learn they learn and i see you know improvement in them but i know with time opportunities will come i know there is one on the way which some of my players are scouted and the, the, the you know the, the whole thing is is ongoing okay. by the grace of god they have their opportunity from there it's about time it's about being objective i am objective at developing players when the time comes i will actually get to where ever i want to get to or the climax and it is not about me it's about the players themselves you know i was talking about the loss of the game yes. i talked about the first law which is ball pitch i talked about the second law which is the ball i talked about the third one which is the player themselves and they are the main factor if we have a pitch there's no player we don't have football if we have ball we don't have players we don't have football if we have players equipment and there are so many and there are no players to use them we don't have football. If you have referees, if you have whatever, and there are no players. So it is upon the players. I told my players my objective. That guys, listen, this is why I am coaching. If it's about money, I know you are owing me a lot. You can't pay me. If it's about you going abroad, I really don't have the link. I told them. But I want to train a player that will go beyond where I have never played for. Hmm. That's the objective. And they hold it. Or held and i told them i don't know if it's you i don't know if it's you but what i know is that i have a reason for coaching and i'm telling you okay. so if you want to key into my vision if you want to key into the reason why i am coaching then pick it and then i am ready to do anything with you yeah coach. i do only football aside of being a computer scientist because i do graphics and, and some other IT uh, stuff because that's what i studied basically in the polytechnic oh, okay. so a lot of people will ask this and I'm, I can I, I'm saying that um, f do you do do football academies necessary do they have to have a school and a football academy or it's a distraction or you can have both a school and a football academy what's the best model for a football academy does it have to be a school that means that the same academy will have a secondary school, we have a primary school, and we have a football academy. Or it will just be basically football academy. What's your take about this model of, um, of um, football academy? Which one is preferable? Or is there any other alternative you have about football academies? Thank you. Uh, from, the, from the plans and the project of the academy, Youth School Soccer Academy, for our next project, to be precise, is to start a sports school. A sports I remember school. I mentioned the Ministry of Education the other time. I have, I have done a lot of findings in order to establish it because I know where she pinches me. Definitely. Sometimes parents will bring their kids to my academy at 15, at 16, 17, that they want to come and play football. They are, it's late already. It's late already. But we can't say no. We have to accept they will do our best some have natural talent some don't have at all we just have to do it extra for them to become one so now going back to your question if you have a school like i said let the physical and education be sound and be practiced in that school it can be there then you know some they have passion for the game but they might not really want to become a professional okay but yet they want to do it that's one then if soccer academy it simply means 
for those who want to become a professional in that field. So if we are having a school that cater for basketball, lawn tennis, golf, judo, whatever, then from that school, they can, after their secondary school or thereabout, they can go and continue in a judo academy, I don't know if they use academy or judo club or golf club or whatever club they want to go to. So in that case, they would not have lost so many, or wasted so many times because this one also led us to age cheats. Okay. It led us to age cheats. Because somebody that started learning football at 15 and has seven years to learn the game. Tell me, if the person will not cheat, unlike somebody who started learning from age mm -hmm. five that FIFA said, that's why I said a lot of people don't put FIFA in their plans when they are, when they are doing a lot of it. So if you put FIFA plan or structure into choosing your career, you will know that at age five, I should have started. Mm. At age 10, I should be at this level. At age 15, I should be on under 17. At age 20, I should be on under 20. At age maybe 23, 21, 20, 24, you should be in the super ego. I am just trying to borrow them this uh, ecosystem now in case they don't have it. <laughs> so now, for every individual too, you know I said it earlier, that we are not only training people to become a footballer, to yeah. become somebody in life. In life yeah. So you must know that everything is about time. So now, if it's about uh, having a school and academy, the two can stand. The two cannot affect each other. Education is football. Football is education. There are yeah. so many terminologies when you give it to a player who does not really have a basic education, you'll be looking for meaning up and down. Mm. Imagine if you stand at the sideline and you tell, oh, come on, let's transit from the defense to the attack. They were like, what, are, what is this man saying? When you say down the line, you, you know, all these terminologies yeah. in football has meaning. So if somebody does not really have basic education, how will you know all these terminologies in football? So mm -hmm. it is still going to really be affecting us. So you cannot leave football out of education. Mm -hmm. I cannot leave education out of football. It's unfortunately that we have separated it. Like they used to say, what God has joined together, let no man uh, put asunder. That, that is sport and education. Because when somebody is not is not sound, it, it, it sets the coach back, no matter how talented he is. When you cannot understand. And even now, I've told my players, you have to start learning languages. Not only Yoruba, Igbo, and Aosa. Start learning other foreign languages. Otherwise, when you have talent and you don't have extra, when you have talent, you don't know, you know, have the opportunity to manage your, uh, you know, uh, uh, you don't have ability to manage your opportunity, then what happens to your ability? Well, well said. So, now, now well, uh, then, okay, yeah, keep keep on, keep on. We, we, the Nigerians, we are, we are listening, yeah. keep on. Like I said, the project we are having from now is to start a school from its 10, minimum, from GSS1. Immediately they finish their common entrance. Then they come into the academy, we work on them for six years. Within the scope of six years, we begin to know who wants to continue in the game, who wants to go into sports psychology that will not be kicking the ball around, who wants to go into sports law that will not have to be playing the ball, who wants to go into nutritionist. These are fields that are needed, that are marketable and that are sellable in football. So they can go in that same line. A sports psychologist must have played the game. You need to know how you debate best in for body. I'm sorry to use that uh, no, it's fine. Uh, I mean, now. It's, yeah. So now you need to know how it how this how it how it happens to us few, yeah. before you can try to psychologically, you know, handle or manage a player. Okay. So, so cool. all these questions you can talk about is also in football. Okay. Yeah, let me let me you mentioned something very vital in your explanation and I'm sure I have to tell you that your explanation has been um, very objective and very useful enough for anybody that is having an academy. But you also, I want you to elaborate on um, how a cheat can be called, reduced, eradicated in Nigeria um, football. Do you have the case of MRI? We also have um, cases of um, in the past where the under 17 in Nigeria, you don't see the usual under 17. How can this be called and how can we have a balanced age grade system so that when we go to the World Cup, we have under 17, the players are 17 under. 
and all that. Yes. So what advice can you give stakeholders, major stakeholders, the NFF, major um, and the stakeholders, and everybody listening from across the globe, how are you going to help them solve this? Or do you think it's an, um, an issue that cannot be solved? Uh, 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 there's no problem without a solution. Mm. And the solution is always beside the problem. From all the points I have outlined as challenges we have in academies, parents is also one of them. Oh, okay. Parents is one of them. Okay. As the child grows, do you, do you monitor what talent does this child have that needs to be assisted or that needs to be followed. Yes, if academy combines education, parents will not have problem. Hmm. Yes, they will not have problem. Because a lot of parents cannot mortgage the education of their children to football. Because they know that for football, they will not give my child education. Hmm. That's why we are going into that business now that we want to ensure that parents know what we are talking about. We want to give your child the education he or she needs and give the sport she also will, is willing or he also is willing to practice. Then in that case, parents can be rest assured that, oh, my child is safe. The future of my child is safe. So in that case, we can monitor a child that has talent. Okay. You know, talent is of of different ages you can see a boy in one of those uh, my, my my clips you can see that that boy is, is young is in ss2 so now the parents believe that oh as he goes to school he comes to training even if he closes from school at five he still comes to training he has the talent hmm. what about the home without the talent well, so okay. what are we going to do so we just have to still combine the education nothing affects education even if the talent is not developed no problem the talent can also be encouraged or oh, as we, as we go by you know that's why psychology comes in if you as a coach know that this guy is having a slow developmental process or progress you can decide to say ah, and this boy can be good at um, medics maybe mm -hmm. during a match give him a first aid box to take along together with the with the medical team then from there you can decide to be introducing him into the medical aspect of the game you can decide to be taking him into the aspect of curator. You know, oh, hey, Shebo, you are going to be the one to manage all the boys at the training session today. Make sure you count them. Make sure you take them back to the store and do all the things. You know, you begin to have that sense of responsibility. Even though he does not become a, a, a professional footballer, okay. he can become a curator. Somebody manages Chelsea, Man U, Arsenal, Jesse's, Balls, Coons, all their training facilities. Somebody is in charge of it. It does not really mean that the person kicks the ball around until Chelsea wins the game. No. If I'm, if I'm wrong, no, a lot of people who are also administrators can also understand. So, to reduce that age cheat to the barest minimum, we need to take it back to school. Like when I was a teacher, because I taught in a school for years, but because, you know, I really don't uh, like the way they pay or something, so I had to face <laughs> the game squarely. Okay. I discovered that when they were in GSS1, Fantastic players, lovely players. When you see them at that age, eight, nine, ten, we know these are talents. They don't need to tell you. I have so many of them in my academy. They don't need to tell you. But now, at, what are the rules of parents in that in that aspect? Mm. Are they in support? Are they not afraid of oh what will now happen to my child? If you go to a parent now that the issue of a, a child trafficking is everywhere, and you say you want to adopt a child. That you want to sponsor him for football. Ah, they say, ah, they come on, you know, they have started the genome. Ah, no, let me go and talk to my pastor. Let me go and talk to my affair. Let me go and consult one uh, other, you know, spiritual uh, you know, person like that before such can be committed into your hand. You can see, they will delay the talent of that guy. They will delay his time until there will be a reason why they have to cheat in the age. Hmm. So in my own academy, I have told my players point blank. The reason I don't become a professional to the level I want is one of is that reason. <laughs> because my uncle then, because I live with my uncle, he beats me a lot and do a lot of things. I don't know if he's listening to me now, wherever he is, he is in the world now. <laughs> now, then, he said, until I'm done with my secondary school. So now, he delayed that talent. Until last weekend, I was playing and my boys were like, coach, you should be playing football. 
I was like, forget that one. Are you going to adopt it as a be? <laughs> leave that one for me. My own time has gone. <laughs> so to reduce it, we have to go back to the parents. Coach, let parents understand that my child have a talent. Okay. And let's not worry. Okay. Um, uh, um, Coach, you, you said um, it the way it should be, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers are, are listening and are dotting and putting one or two things um, together for what you've done. We, we still have you with us, uh, but we want um, our listeners to, uh, our viewers rather, across the globe to have a feel of um, the Copa America games. Um, you know, Copa America is ongoing in, Can um, in USA, so we are going to give you um, the some of the two matches that's one Costa Rica and Paraguay and not forgetting the match and between highlights between Brazil and Colombia. So don't leave us yet. When we come back, we'll now talk about um, the draws, the AFCON 2025 draws when Nigeria is grouped with um, Ben again and Rwanda. There's more on that. So when we come back, we'll still talk, on you, to talk with you on the AFCON 2025 qualifiers draws that just held two hours ago. Thank you. I'm with you. The best of football is in South America. Some say the best of football is in um, Europe. Some say the best of football is in Africa. But, uh, let me divert a bit and ask my guests what's your opinion on that. Um, Coach, um, Coach Ojo, we still have you there? Thank you so much. Yeah, so let, let, me, let me come. Let's, let's change our mind of challenges of football academies. Let, let me ask you this. Some say the best of football is in South America, that continent. Some say it's in Africa. Some are saying it's in Europe. Um, going on right now is um, the Copa America and um, the Euro 2 is also going on right now in Germany. Copa America is going on in America. I've seen the highlight of um, Copa America. I've also seen the highlight of um, um, the Euros. With, um, some few months ago, we watched um, the African Nations Cup. Um, to you, where do you think football really belongs? I mean, football, football. I, I think I'll share a little bit of mine. I mean, uh, but, but where do you think football belongs to? Well, uh, football belongs everywhere. Mm. But depends on how we transform it. Mm. To me, if I would read it, I would say football is, uh, is raw in Africa. Football is manufactured in South America hmm. and so in Europe. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 you said, yeah, yeah, I, I think I agree with you. You said something that um, you said um, it all depends on how you um, transform it, you impact it. And, and, and that's why, it's because of that impact, is why I'm going to choose Europe. Uh, um, I'm choosing Europe because when you watch America, when you, because when you watch EU and you watch Copa America and you watch African nations, the way you show to the rest of the world what you have, you understand, say so much about it. And I tell you that the way you see what's happening in EU right now, the way technology is playing a role in assessing many things and going on, you look at, um, you, and when we talk about um, marketing, the business part of it, you, you look at what is going on in Europe, the old stadium is filled. Uh, you understand? It's, and it's not just... It's, People have that center of the stadium. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just um, about whether you are good in the talent. It's about how do you make somebody that doesn't like football come to the stadium with his family and watch football? And make it sellable. Yes. And that's what is happening in Europe. In Africa, we don't care. You see that some stadium in, um, in Cote d'Ivoire during the period of um, the Nations Cup is only when Cote d'Ivoire is playing and some other African country that you see the stadium filled up. So we claim we love football in Africa, but the real sense is that we've not really, really call ourselves that we love football if we cannot go fill the stadium every time, whether it's your favorite team that is playing, whether it's never. And that's why I want to say that I think the best of football is in Europe. To that, to that, we, we, we stake a lot of things in Africa. 
we state a lot of things in Africa. We present ourselves the way we are not. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it is only when that time comes that we begin to do the needful. It is always very late. I was at the Women Af uh, African Women Champions League in, in the same Ivory Coast. I saw what was there. It was it was fantastic. Will it always be like that? Another thing is our economic situation in Africa. Somebody who has not eaten, somebody who cannot afford to to you know social amenities. You want him to come and buy tickets to go and watch the game. So yeah, economic you, situation. Yeah, you actually you yeah, actually no. yeah. Coach, you, you said this well, you cannot take the economy away from, we cannot take football away from the economy. It's just the, it's, um, the ripple effect of what is happening in Africa will happen in every other sector of the economy. And, and, and let, 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 me, let me tell you this, let me tell you this. The whole country, almost the whole continent is preparing for Paris 2024 Olympics. If you sit down here, wherever you are uh, in the world, in terms of athletics, you can see what is happening in British athletics at the trials. You can see what is happening in American um, athletics at the trials because everybody is doing their trials. But here in Nigeria, you cannot see what is happening at Edo Samuel Bermuda Stadium where Nigeria did their own athletics because they don't showcase it. It's not being broadcasted. Nobody's there's seeing no, it. There's no, there's no text to all what we do. Yes. So, so that's why... That's yeah, go on. Those are not had. Yeah, go on, go on. The, the, You're trying the to say something. Tech, the role of tech, the role of tech in our sport in Nigeria is is another is another is another one. Playing in Rio, I can't watch on my phone. European League, I can watch on my phone. As soon as I get back home now, <laughs> I just go watch on my phone on my palm. But if it's in New York, even to access the stadium, the security on the road. The road is bad, traffic, everything. If I have to be at the stadium, because I like to watch both live at the stadium, than even watching on screen, because of the side attraction and so many other things that you will you will you will learn. Probably you have to interview one or two people and all that, you know. So it's important that we put tech, we put economy into the system so it can work. Okay, imagine like what I've what I've learned recently. Uh, Africa players goes to South America now. Hmm. To refine them and now sell them to Europe. Wow. To make money. They will gain in South America. We always lose in Africa. Why? Because the person who struggle to travel to uh, South America, probably he, he collected a loan, or maybe family go and sell the, a plot of land to take him to South America. Do you expect such a person to come and give back? Hmm. To us, but never giving him anything. Yes, um, you can see the genesis of how we lose coach, in this sports business, in Africa. I, I can see you're so passionate. You're, you're, you're passionate about it, and I think it's um, it's fair. But we can spend the whole day talking. If if, talk. if, if, we, if we sell players in Europe and collect millions of dollars, and we don't have stadium in Nigeria, where did they come from? Yeah, let's. Uh, never thought of. Yeah, coach. So when you sell a player, the money goes to wrong 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 place. Compensation. I read recently that there, there, there's about fifty billion dollars unclaimed compensation that belongs to probably African, you know, countries or academies like this that develop some players that become professional now. They can claim it probably because they don't have the knowledge of how to how yeah, to use their documentation to claim their, their compensation. But in Europe, compensation they know is, is the most you get it, you get it, and it is there. So who is to claim that? Academy does not have, you know, all these things that, you know, we are supposed to put in place. FIFA Connect is not there. TMS, all those things, systems are not, are not in the, in the academy system. Coach and again, to get is done. They are not financially affordable. Yeah, Coach Ojo. Academy that are supposed to buy board, that are to buy codes, cannot afford to, to go and register for those things. Yeah, Coach Ojo. So, um, I think you said it well. Branding, you said so it so many. well, and I'm sure that um, a lot of views, um, our viewers are so, um, they've seen your passion as regards to supporting um, football academies, and that's why you said your objective 
to our football academy goes beyond monetary value that you want to impart life and i can see that in the way you express yourself so much you can only hope that um, um your football academy gets to the peak of your art desire but before we wind up the show i also want you to share your thought two hours ago um in um south africa we had um, the AFCON 2025 qualifiers draw. And um, it's on this note that we should know that um, Nigeria has been grouped in Group D alongside with Nigeria, Benin, Republic, La Libya, and Rwanda. Um, what, what's your opinion on this? Let's not forget we faced Benin Republic some few um, weeks ago when we lost to our own former coach. What's your opinion in regards to um, these qualifiers? Especially about, uh, about, the, about the groupie. Yeah, especially Nigeria. Nigeria is in Group D. This game is about is about preparation. It's about plan. So in a moment you don't plan, in a moment you don't prepare, you are you are you are you are, you are liable not to get the desired result. Hmm. So if Nigeria, in fact, it I I felt the pain that a nation like Benin Republic will defeat Nigeria in a football game. Two things came to my mind. Number one, I said it earlier, football generally, the objective for football for FIFA is development. The main objective of FIFA is development. It shows that football has developed in Benin Republic. Hmm. And not develop or developing in Nigeria. That's what happens. So you think we can qualify? So we can, do you think we can qualify from that group before time is no longer our friend? And do you think it's a group that we should be optimistic about? We don't have, we don't have a coach right now, and uh, we know that the qualifiers are all going around right now. But um, um, we will start in uh, soonest. But tell us, um, do you think Nigeria can qualify from that group? I I I, I really can't deceive myself. Okay. From our past and from our results so far, eighty as a coach. Okay. I just have to keep trying because it's just like a football game that I'm on like one zero down or two zero down. I should not tell my players, say, "Oh, players, I'm sorry, we have lost this game." No, I can't say that we have to as play. a coach. But what I can do is to say we should look in critically into why we lost those games we lost. Oh, okay. And fix it. That's the only thing Coach that Ojo, can secure our sport, the World Cup. Coach Jojo, we want to say a big thank you. If we check our time right now, we have just a few minutes to um, the hour of six. And um, that's where we want to call it a wrap for today's show. Thank you very much. Um, we can only hope you and wish your club um, the best um, in, in your all endeavors, your academies. And we hope that soonest and in the next future, we'll... We have you again to talk with on um, trending stories, especially in the world of football. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I really appreciate it. Yes, and we've been speaking with um, Coach Ojo. He is um, the owner of um, Useful um, Youth um, Football Academy based in Ekbaja, Command Ekbaja, precisely. That's where he's based. And he has done so well for himself, an ex player. And he also has several football academy. He has that football academy has traveled and is a product of the Nigerian Institute of, um, of Sport. That's um, the 34th, um, 35th um, African Cup of Nations is scheduled to be hosted by um, Morocco from the 21st of December 2025 to 18th of January 2026. So uh, we'll um, leave you right now with the draws of the AFCON 2025 qualifiers draw that placed us in Group D alongside with um, Rwanda, Libya and um, Benin Republic. Thank you very, very, thank you very much. I remember that you should do. Same time tomorrow, we'll be giving you all what you need to know in the world of sport. Bye for now.